Hello. Thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Today, we will focus on the first of the five values that support Calvary's mission, relatable truth. You can download the Life Notes from calvaryaz.com forward slash Life Notes, grab your Bible, and turn to Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Now, let's hear from Pastor Chad Garrison. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the path of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water, yielding its fruit in season, its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. For all scripture is God breathed and is profitable for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. For if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. Jesus said, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and come follow me. For if we walk by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. But whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, Jesus said he will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Jesus sat down on the hillside and began to teach them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, let us let our light shine before men that they may see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. It is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. A new command I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, so you must also love one another. By this, all men will know that you really are my disciples if you love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love does not know God, for God is love. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. For God demonstrates his own love towards us in this, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, yet have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, Yet have, and have a faith that can even move mountains, yet have not love, I'm nothing. And if I give all I possess to the poor and even deliver my own body to the flames, yet don't have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not envy, does not boast. It is not proud and it is not rude. Love is not easily angered, does not demand its own way, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. And it always trusts, it always hopes, it always endures, never gives up. 
Love never fails. Now remain these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him flew the seraphim, Each had six wings. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they were flying. And they called to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the whole temple filled with smoke. And I cried, Woe is me. Woe is me. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall we, I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. For all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. For there is salvation in no one else. For there's no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, not even one. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, like one from whom men hide their faces He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he carried our griefs and bore our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. For I am the resurrection and the life, he said. Even if you die, yet if you believe, yet you shall live. And he who lives and believes in me, he will never die. For I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Therefore, we should rejoice always, pray continually, and in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you who are in Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God has forgiven you. Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is like a king who was settling accounts with his servants And one was brought to him that owed him 10,000 talents. And because he could not pay, 
The king ordered that he and his wife and his children and all his possessions be sold into debtor's prison until the whole amount should be paid. And the servant fell on his knees and he pleaded with the king and he said, please be patient with me and I will repay you everything. And the king had compassion on him and forgave his debt. That servant went out from the presence of the king and saw one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he grabbed him and he choked him and he said, hey, pay me what you owe me. And the servant fell down on his knees and he begged his fellow servant, be patient with me and I will pay you everything that I owe you. But that servant refused and he sold him into debtor's prison. His fellow servants were outraged and they went and reported that to the king. And the king brought that servant back in before him and he said, you wicked servant. I had mercy on you. How could you not have mercy on your fellow servant? And he ordered that he be sold into debtor's prison until the entire debt should be paid. In the same way your heavenly father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all of his angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and he will gather the nations together and he will separate them as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Then the king will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not come to me. And they too will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not minister to you? And the king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to the least of of these brothers of mine, you did not do it to me. And these will depart into eternal punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but rather with humility of mind, consider others more important than yourselves. Do not merely look after your own interests, but also the interests of others. Have the same attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. And being found in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. Therefore God has given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. Of that which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Of God the Father. So do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For no one can serve two masters. For he will love the one and hate the other. He will cling to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, we poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So remember this. Whoever sows sparingly 
will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one should give as he has decided in his heart to give, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So let us be doers of the word and not hearers only and so deceive ourselves. Let us be doers of the word and not hearers only and so deceive ourselves. Let each of us be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness which God desires. And let no unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but only that which builds up those who hear that it may benefit the one who listens. Because with our mouth we praise God, and with it we curse men who are made in God's image. Out of the same mouth come both praise and curses. Brothers, this should not be. For reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. And do not take your own revenge, but leave room for the wrath of God, for vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and will forgive us our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. So confess your sins to one another and pray for each other that you may be healed. And consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result that you might be mature and complete, lacking nothing. For we rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope will not disappoint because God has poured his spirit into our hearts. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Jesus said, if you listen to these words of mine and put them into practice, you are like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the floods rose, the wind blew, and the house stood firm because it had its foundation on the rock. But the one who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains came down, the floods rose, the wind blew, and the house fell, and great was its fall. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the path of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, yielding its fruit in its season. His leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Psalm 1, the very first psalm 
If uh, you're in one of our campuses and uh, you don't have a Bible, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles and the seats around you. Uh, They're there. Turn to page 528. Page 528. You'll be able to follow along with us in Psalm 1. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please take one with you. We want you to have God's Word and read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then uh, just ask and we'll get you one. Uh, You can message the service host. You can email us at calvaryaz.com and we'd be glad to help you out with the Bible because we know if you uh, read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, I I just got to say, on Sunday at 5 at Leonard Bridge Beach, we're doing baptisms and we would love for you to be a part of that. You know, I love lake baptisms, I love baptisms anytime we get to celebrate life change. So, uh, you know, if you are someone who's made a a decision to follow Jesus and you've never declared it to the world publicly, this is your opportunity. Uh, You can, uh, it's kind of, you can still sign up online, but uh, otherwise, if you want to fill out one of those connect cards and hand it to one of the pastors on your way out, we'll be glad to uh, add you to the list. And, and we're like, if you just show up and you're not on the list, we're not going to turn your way. We're going to encourage you to follow Jesus in obedience because we're excited about that. Hey, we're in our series called About Us. And last week we talked about the, the mission of Calvary. And today we're talking about one of our core values. And it's the first one we're talking about. And it's relatable truth. Relatable truth. I think you've heard about this one before. If we read and apply God's word... God will change our lives. You guys hear that just, just about every week from the pulpit at Calvary, no matter which campus you're at. And, uh, and so uh, we're biblical people. And, and we really believe in the power of Scripture to, to alter our lives. Our first essential doctrine, if you came to our intro class, you'd know this, is that we believe the Bible is the inerrant, inspired Word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. So uh, I, I shared the scriptures that I did uh, a little bit ago, because not because I wanted to show off, okay, um, but because I wanted to inspire. I wanted you to, to know that we take scripture seriously, and, and we want you to take scripture seriously, and so I wanted to inspire you, you know, to memorize scripture more than you're doing right now. And some of you have convinced yourself that you can't memorize scripture, and uh, by the way, that's a lie, and it started... Do you guys know who started that lie? Yeah, okay, some of you got it over here. Some of you are like, well, my parents told me I wasn't real bright, so I just gave up. <laughs> no, look, the lie came from Satan, okay? He doesn't want you to memorize Scripture. Why? Because if you read and apply God's Word, what is God going to do? Yeah, He's going to change your life, and Satan doesn't want your life to be changed. He's already grieving the fact that Jesus has saved you from your sin. And so he would like you to live a miserable, imprisoned life in gloom and doom. Okay, I'm just telling you right now. So we're biblical people. We want people to read the Bible. That's why we give them away. Oh, by the way, the second reason that that I, uh, I shared the scripture that I did is because I want you to know that we practice what we preach here at Calvary. That we tell you that if you read and apply God's word, it'll change your life. And, and I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm an example of that. And uh, we all, all the pastors take God's word seriously. And I'm not going to tell them they all have to get up here and, and, and quote it uh, but, uh, in the same manner. But I'm just saying that, that we base our lives on this book. That, that we're not hypocrites when it comes to God's word. So we want people to read the Bible. That's why we give them away. That's why we encourage you to read them. Uh, if you're not on version, you should probably jump on version, download version, and get it. It's a great way to read scripture with your friends, reading through the Bible of the year. We, I do that. I've got a number of people that I'm reading through the Bible with. Uh, I do that every year, and it's great accountability because if you fall behind, everybody knows it. <laughs> so, I mean, read it together, encourage each other together because we know scripture in your life will lead to blessings. Psalm 1, which I quoted a couple of times, simply says, I'm going to read the first three verses. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Okay? Uh, 
This is, this is the blessings of God. And as we read that again, uh, I'm just going to ask you, what voices inform your life? What voices inform your life? There's a warning in verse 1, right? Blessed is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, who does not stand in the path of sinners, who does not sit in the seat of mockers. You know what that is? That, that's just saying, hey, don't hang out with people who are going to corrupt your values, all right? Delight in the law of the Lord, in the Bible, in the teachings of Jesus. You see, all of us have voices speaking into our lives. Let me just ask this. Am I the only one who has voices in my head? Or does anybody else have them too? Okay? Now, some of you didn't raise your hand, and I'm not sure you understand how this works. You do have voices in your head. You have the voice of your parents in your head. And some of you are still like, you're going to therapy trying to get rid of them. They're not going to go away. You just have to learn to ignore them. Okay, but you have your parents' voices in your head. You have the voices of your friends in your head. That's why if you walk with the wise, you become wise. Yeah, if you, but the companion of fools suffers harm. You know, you've got your friends' voices. You've got political voices in your head. Right now, they're on our phones. They're texting us. They're doing all that kind of stuff, right? Everywhere you turn right now, it's political. There's political voices that want to speak into your head. There are cultural voices trying to get a piece of you wanting you to share in their idea of what the culture is like. And hopefully, you have the voice of truth in your head. So I have to ask you, which one has power in your life, the voice of the wicked or the voice of the wisdom? Okay, well, that's easy to... You know the right answer. You're in church. Okay, look. We, we, we can pass this test, can't we? The problem is the test isn't here. Okay, the test is when you're out there and you're living life at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday or 11 p.m. on Friday. That's when the tests are. 7 a.m. on Monday morning when you're getting the kids ready for school, that's when the tests are. See, is it the voice of wickedness or the voice of wisdom? The voice you listen to determines your outcome because success and stability result from a life built on God's word. Okay, the promise is in verse 3. You heard this. Again, if you dwell on God's word, meditate day and night, you're like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither. Everything you do is going to prosper. Okay, this is echoed in Jesus' teachings at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. The wise and the foolish builders, right? The one who hears and applies Jesus' words is going to succeed. Now, I know that you believe this, at least most of us do, in this room. But... And just be honest, we're not all that effective at living it out. We believe it, but we're not always like applying it to our lives. And it might just simply be the details. Because we want to know, how is God going to bless? How is God going to build success and stability through reading and applying the Bible? So let me just give you three concrete ways that knowing Scripture helps us. Okay? If I need to, this is my encouragement to you to read and apply God's word. This is my encouragement to you to take scripture more seriously than you've been taking it, okay? First of all, knowing scripture helps us know God's voice. Knowing scripture helps us know God's voice. Uh, do you guys want God to speak to you? Yes. See, you know, it's, it, it's, you, it, it's great to invite God to speak to us, but most of the time we're ignoring him. Because he's already spoken to us right here in the Word of God. All right, it's, it's truth. If you want to know it's God speaking to you, then know Scripture. Because the only way to learn God's voice is to know His Word. And when you read the Bible, then the Holy Spirit speaks to you from Scripture. I was 17 years old. I knew I was going into ministry, and I started devouring Scripture. I got a Bible I could read, okay? It's one of the modern translations. It was New American Standard. That was modern to me at the time. I grew up on King James Version. Yay. And, and so... <laughs> So I'm devouring scripture and I come across Ephesians 5, 4, which says, but among you, that's us, there must be no filthy talk or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather the giving of thanks. And it was like the Holy Spirit took the hardbound copy and whacked me upside the head. Because my mouth was not honoring to God. Okay, I, just, I was rude, crude, and socially unacceptable, okay? And... And I read that, and God said to me, this applies to you because you think you want to speak for me. You can't do it with your mouth right now. 
Now, God took a hot coal and touched Isaiah's mouth. And I'm thankful he didn't do that to mine, but he did tell me I need to change the way I talked. And I heard him. It was one of the clearest things he ever, first time he ever spoke to me that clearly. So knowing scripture helps us to know God's voice. And knowing scripture helps us understand God's values. All right? This means having a biblical worldview. You see, God reveals himself and his values in the Bible. And, and, you know, if we want to represent Jesus well, if we want to serve him faithfully, then we have to know what God values. That's why it's so important to know scripture. That's why I want you to read Jesus. That's the gospels. So you know, oh, this is what Jesus did. This is how Jesus treated people. Now I understand what his values are. Because today, in this world that we live in, there are many people trying to misrepresent Jesus because they, they like the idea of Jesus and they try to squeeze him into their value system. Right? There are people who are trying to squeeze Jesus into their value system for sexuality. There are people who are trying to squeeze Jesus into their political party. By the way, I don't know if you realize this, but both political parties, both major political parties claim the moral high ground. Neither has it. Okay, we're talking about Jesus and they're trying to, you know, co-opt Jesus. There's people who try to, you know, use Jesus to promote their version of an economy. And, and see, here's the thing. God isn't going to endorse our values. God wants us to adopt his values and to surrender our values to him. Okay, he wants us to sacrifice our values on the altar of surrender and say, God changed my values so that my values reflect your values. And the only way you can do that, the only way you can have a biblical worldview is if you know what's in this book. You have to know what's in God's word. So, under, you know, knowing scripture helps us understand God's values. And then knowing scripture helps us follow Jesus. It helps us follow Jesus. If we claim to be Jesus' followers, if we believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, we believe that he died on the cross to pay for our sins and was raised from the dead, and we have made a commitment to follow Jesus with our lives, then Jesus is our Lord, he's our master, he's our boss, he's our king. Okay, he's in charge of our lives, which means that we are supposed to do what he says because we are his servants, he has the authority to direct our lives. You know why? Because we gave him the authority to direct our lives. When we confess Jesus as Lord, we said, you're in charge of my life. You're in charge of who I am. You're in charge of my mind, my soul, my body, my strength, all of it. And the Bible is our instructions from our master. Anyone uh, get left at home during summer when your mom and dad had to go to work? A anyone? Did, did they leave a list of chores for you to do? Didn't you love that? No, you didn't. And, but you looked at that list of chores and you knew, we got to do this before they get home or we're going to get in trouble. Right? And, and it never would work for you to say, I didn't see the list, right? No, because you're going to get whooped if you didn't do the, do the list. That, I mean, that's how it worked. And so... We couldn't play dumb and like, oh, I didn't know what you said because I couldn't read the list. That's not, that's not going to work. Guess what? God left a list. It's called the Bible. And you know what we're doing? We're playing dumb because we're not reading the Bible and so we don't know what God is telling us to do. We're like, I don't know what God wants me to do. I think I'll do what I want to do. And so we're not following Jesus because we're ignoring his instructions. We say we're followers. We kind of want to follow him. We love him because we know he died for our sins. And, and we're thankful for that. But we're ignoring our master when we ignore the Bible. If we want to be followers of Jesus, we need to immerse ourselves in God's word. It's plain and simple. We can't follow Jesus if we don't, if we don't know what he wants us to do or where he wants us to go. So do you want to follow Jesus? Okay, then read and apply God's word. For blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, yielding its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Let's pray.
Father, thank you for communicating to us so clearly that we can know your voice, that we can understand your wisdom, that we can follow your plan. And you've made it so clear to us because we have it written down in black and white. God, we just confess that we ignore your wisdom and we don't pay attention to your plans and we kind of uh, pretend that we know your values, uh, but a lot of times they're just our values and we use your name in vain. So God, today we repent and we ask that you would change our hearts and our minds so that we might live as sons and daughters of God. That is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If we read and apply the Word of God, He will change our lives. It's an often repeated theme here at Calvary because we've seen it happen time and time again. We always rejoice in the stories of life change. If you have any questions or want prayer, visit calvaryaz.com forward slash connect and fill out a connect card. One of our pastors will contact you and pray with you this week. Well, that's all for today. Join us again next week when our focus will be on transparent living. Bye-bye. Looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.